this is Heresiarch, um, and the title actually means uh, the leader of a heresy, um, which is unfortunately maybe me uh, leading a heresy, the combining of pure abstraction with realism, something that traditionally has never been believed would work. Um, the reason that I believe it can work is a philosophical reason that we've been used to centuries of the realism of the narrative lyrics of music working with the pure abstraction of the melody. Musical melodies are pure abstraction. So they work in an audio sense. Why shouldn't they work in a visual sense? And I believe, um, I absolutely believe that they do work, that they communicate more eloquently than anything else. So Heresiarch, um, their main model is entirely glued on, painted elsewhere and glued to the canvas. And it's very hard to find anywhere where you can see the edge of where that canvas was glued to this canvas. There's only one little place you can see it, and that is over the top of his head. You can see one line where it was attached. It's attached with rabbit skin glue, so it will last for 500 years and never come off. Um, so it began to be a relationship between him. He, by the way, was the mayor's assistant for Austin. He's now, I believe, working in uh, politics in Washington and is an extraordinary model, Matt Curtis. Um, the woman below was photographed for an entirely different painting, uh, and I used her in this one. And she was laid back and laid back and reduced and then spattered over with paint and just got better and better. The more she was, um, you might say, subsumed by paint, the better she became. And now when I back off and I, I just see her um, underneath all that paint, I, my heart goes out to her. I... I completely sympathize with her. And, and I've literally rubbed paint down her right side and across her left forearm and across the top of her forehead and, and done my best to completely beat her up. And I absolutely sympathize as a viewer. I, don't you? I mean, I just understand her completely as a character in relation to him in all his ar arrogance. I understand the couple of them. Uh, once again, they both have symbols around their heads. She has this fluttery, soft thing with little sparkles in it, like something associated with a wedding, maybe. Um, he has this sign on the right side of his head, this floating pale salmon bubble, which I've used now in two or three other paintings. For some reason, the upper right side of the head is very important to me. I, I place a symbol there often now feeling that it's the right place to be saying something and I don't know why that is. The halo started to break down in his case. It broke down around his head on the left side. It disappeared from the right side and a part of it you see has flown off to the left side of the painting and become a mark in its own right. And that mark, if you look in the impasto, you can see other marks underneath that were done that weren't successful. And so they were redone and redone until they were successful. So just like in good rock music, um, it may look reckless, it may sound reckless, but actually it's engineered. Um, and that doesn't mean that it's robbed of all uh, intuition. It, it isn't, but... Uh, it still needs to be engineered correctly. So the way that that was done was the paint was mixed up in some volume. I literally ran across the studio and placed the mark on. And it was the only way to get it to succeed in looking reckless. Um, the, the impasto in this was done with a mixture of permalba, which seems to be one of the longest lasting paint thickening mediums mixed with plaster in some cases 
where it's smooth, you can see that it's plaster. And um, this painting has almost no sand in it. Only, I think, in the, cent the left-hand block of dark green is there sand mixed in. And Brack, in a lot of his early Cubist paintings, used sand quite a bit. As long as it's boiled to remove any uh, living components, it, uh, it lasts indefinitely. It just sits in its own little pocket in the paint and never changes. <clears throat> so um, you can see the seeds of a heresiarch in Borgia's Regret. On the top right-hand side of Borgia's Regret, you see the word heresia, which is Italian for heresy. And I just love this painting. I'm in love with it. Hmm. How do you spell Cornell? P E R M.